Hey, everybody. So we have a special guest on the show. He's Brady, the ESFP, and he has newly discovered himself as a Socionics ESFP as well, and which is also called an SEE. So I've been talking with uh, Brady, and I've showed him the, um, the Socionics model in terms of all eight of the functions. So what we're going to talk about here is about how ESFP identifies with all eight of the functions according to this model. So it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a really fun time when we were on the panel together with Joy, yes. which should be released soon. I don't know exactly when, but um, it was really cool connecting with you there. I've watched a lot of your videos, and we've had interactions, yeah. so it was cool to it was cool to meet in person. Well, yes. in person, yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. In, in the ether space. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> so before we go on and talk about all eight functions of the ESFP and how they express themselves, I just want to let you know that. Brady is writing a really cool book with Joyce Meng. So can you please tell us mm -hmm. about it? Yeah. So um, I was often on Joyce's, um, like the comment sections and just kind of, I, I just lurk and leave little comments there. Mm -hmm. And eventually she invited me to part of her panels. Uh -huh. And then at one point she was like, Hey, can you help me um, edit something? So I went and helped her edit some questions. She was thinking about how to type people. And afterwards, she was like, hey, I really like the way you and I work together with this editing process. I'd mm -hmm. like to write a book. Would you like to join me with that? And I was wow. so excited because I was actually in the midst of starting my own uh, blog and website. Um, mm. So I was like, hey, this is actually a better way for me to do this because I have no technology know-how. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, that's not my thing. Uh -huh. um, I wouldn't even know where to start, honestly. I just had written a bunch of articles. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do with all this classic NI problem? You know, lots of SE, lots of doing, right. not a whole lot of organizing or like, what do I do with all this? So right. she gave me an amazing outlet and an amazing opportunity. And mm -hmm. I've just always looked up to her. I'm so excited. It's been really friend too. Like that's been probably my favorite part of all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're writing a book and it's about, about the 16 MBTI types, mm -hmm. but it's also about dichotomies within that. Um, it's also about our approach on how we view typology as a whole mm -hmm. um, and kind of the, the main focus we want to have on it is like a typology community hug. You know, like that's what we've been talking a lot about. It's just being really positive and straying away from the negative stereotypes, focusing mm -hmm. more on improvement, focusing more on how to use typology for good. And um, it's been an amazing, amazing time. Excellent. So it uh, really comes yeah. with a mission too. And yeah, when, it does. when when uh, their book comes out, once once Brady and Joyce uh, remind me, I'm going to put it down in the comment section. So I'm going to bring in this really fantastic website. It's called the World Socioeconomic Society. I think this is very, it's really, really well written. I think is one, my favorite socioeconomic website in terms of the description aspect of mm -hmm. the type. So first of all, like uh, they call you the sensory ethical energizer, right? I think it's like the yeah. perfect title because you guys actually are able to see things. Like, yeah, <laughs> like I, I never even thought of it that way. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the, a, any way of seeing things. Uh, the first function here is force, which is SE, expert sensing. Um, so the ESFP uh, or the SEE here is most notable for their fiercely independent desire to do what they want when they want. Possessed with a strong, challenging, and largely upbeat energy, they are usually the first to act impulsively on a situation according to their will, confronting the immediate reality to make it advantageous to them and those they care about. Um, so, so far, like in, in terms of that, are, what, what are some things you identify with or not? Yeah. yeah, they're certainly blunt. And that's like, while at first, and I had mentioned this to you mm -hmm. um, over our communication, you know, there were a few things that were said here that made me initially when I read this kind of go, whoa, whoa hey, now, <laughs> you know, and I, I had a hard time connecting. But when I kind of got past that, I stopped taking it personally and really thought about it. It's like, yeah, this rings true. You know, mm -hmm. um, the opportunist is absolutely the case with ESFPs. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean it's negative, though. Right. You know, like getting getting what we want does not mean that we want selfish things. It does not mean we want bad things. We could want things that are super advantageous for the people we care for. You know, like, uh, and so when it said here, it's a largely upbeat energy, that's a positive, you know, and 
I can really relate to that. You know, every time that I was in sports, I was always like, you know, either the captain or basically like the cheerleader of the squad. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of that comes from acting impulsively, getting what you want, getting what you want for others. So yeah, I absolutely agree with it so far. Excellent. Great. (coughs) Yes. (coughs) Excuse me. (laughs) it's all good (laughs) yeah my si is dying okay so anyway Uh you got your water that'll i got my water that'll help me out for sure so esfp see success in being able to resist opposing forces and prevail on their own resourcefulness and determination being their own boss and fighting off those who command them when (laughs) yeah yeah? when faced in When faced in a social hierarchy, the only level satisfactory for them is when they answer to no one, resulting in them climbing straight for the top. In such activities, they tend to show great gusto as they love the vitality of pitting themselves against a hard problem and pushing through to the other side. Uh, For this reason, they're seen as gregarious go-getters, rising to challenge and usually reaping the rewards. Uh, they tend to dominate with their ability to steer a conversation the way they want it to go. They tend to be quick in noticing, uh, quickly, they're quickly noticed in a room of people for this reason, and people can find them captivating. Similarly, their natural social confidence is the source of much of their ambition. Uh, they, uh, they're conquering not merely through force, but through the hearts and minds of those they have won over. Yeah, so most of it rings true. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the part that they miss out here that I think is probably maybe more of an ESTP thing from what I've seen mm-hmm. is where they say that we try to get to the top. Mm-hmm. That is not always true uh, mm-hmm. for me or for the other ESTPs. I know sometimes we just want to chill and just be an experienced life, you right. know, and that does not mean striving to be number one. Um, that mm-hmm. kind of makes me think more of um, either TE Dom or, Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that SEs can't do that because of course, you know, like yeah. people from all types can do that. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't think it's the, at least for me, it's not something I related to. Now yeah. that's I, I could see that. Yeah, I, go ahead. Yeah. That said, I do want to be a leader. You know, I do. Mm-hmm. I don't like answering to people, <laughs> you know, like, especially if they're imposing things on me that I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to reject that. So I do, I do agree that we don't like answering to people a whole lot. Um, especially when it seems really petty um, right. or bu- overly bureaucratic, right? Um, which yeah. is funny because I work for a bureaucracy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no one heard that, right? I'm in my office. No, no. <laughs> um, what did he say? What? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, what was that? Um, <laughs> it's um, so the part that here that I was going to say, um, the quickly notice thing, that one is funny because... Mm-hmm. I've always, I always got in trouble in school for my voice was always heard, you know, mm-hmm. like I was, teachers would always call me up and my voice would carry, you know, and I just think that there's a presence. I'm like, wait a second. I, I whispered that. How did they hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you <know? laughs> Your whisper is already loud. So if you're yelling, that must be like the whole world could hear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was kind and I was charming. So I kind of got away with it, you know, mm-hmm. um, which I know that'll come later, but in mm-hmm. this, but um, yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's quite the contrast. Like with the INTP, because they're almost like furniture in a room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have sat on a few INTPs. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was so long ago. School was so long ago. It's kind of hard to think that way. And right now, in the COVID environment, I'm here alone in an office building. You know, it's mm-hmm. uh, I go here because I can't be at home all the time, or I go crazy. But yeah, um, yeah no, yeah. that's uh, so yeah, far. Yeah, I, I could, I could see, absolutely. I could see what you mean. I think, like, um, I think tertiary SC tends to express itself differently from dominant SC because tertiary mm-hmm. is because I guess they kind of like have that complete lack of introvert sensing at all. Like, they're they're that's right. their blind spot, and 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 it's kind of like more like aspirational to them. So they kind of like are very consciously trying to like use SC in a way. Uh, to gain power but like i think yeah, like ESCPs yeah. and ESFPs are different than that yeah yeah no, that's a good point like that's something that um you know like my my dad is an entj um mm-hmm. and you know i had noticed like his use of se is much more 
um, like, I'm going to use this as a tool, right. you know, like, whereas that's just my default state. And right. so I think it, the level in which it's used, the maturity in which it's used is very different. Now, if I try to use TE <laughs> and try to be systematic and organized like he is, that doesn't work out so great for me. So, yeah, yeah pros and cons. More, yeah. more deliberate and uh, conscious. And, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm kind of curious, uh, maybe like mm -hmm. we could get to this when we talk about TE. Do you find that the reverse is true, like with TE, that you use it in a certain kind of way different from your father? Oh, yeah, I use it. I, oh, absolutely. I very much use it as a tool if mm -hmm. that's not to always be used. And when I use it, it's not particularly efficient. It's pragmatic, yeah. right. but it's not efficient. You know, like right. it's mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, this situation calls for this. So I'll get really organized and like, you know, very much like aware of details um, that need to get done mm -hmm. in that moment. And I can think on the fly like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not thinking ahead of time. I'm not long term projecting. I'm not doing what, you know, which is much more efficient. Mm -hmm. So that makes yeah. sense. No, I, and I'm not as like well versed on what that even means because it <laughs> is so, because it, I use it in such a way that it's not strong as much as I'd like to think of myself that way. You know, when I really reflect, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I very much put the P in the ESFP at times, <laughs> you know, like you single handedly not, put the P. <laughs> in yeah, exactly uh, yeah so why yeah. don't we get like a uh a move on here get to and let's talk about yeah. relation relations which is introverted feeling so what oh. it says here is uh possessing a great need for social stimuli esfps like to see their friends regularly and meet with people face to face so as to feel alive and not alone frequently they exercise their will in the sphere of interpersonal relations. They're quickly able to see, uh, size up a person, the subtle likes and dislikes, the invisible boundaries and the lines they could push. And as such, as I such, they know how to charm a stranger, or conquer the opposite sex. This is the one you brought up to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I had told Leon, I was like, I don't know if I agree with this. And like, I kind of got really FI offended um, by that particular line. Mm. Um, now, charming a stranger, I'm cool with. Conquering the opposite sex, I'm not cool with. But, mm. uh, you know, I see what they're, I see what they're saying, but mm. it's just like, <laughs> I just can't get on board with that. You know, like, right. That's not something I've ever done. It very much offended right. my FI. Um, mm -hmm. I throw the baby out with the bathwater, you know, right. because the rest of this is so good. And that's where mm -hmm. I really reflected after I, I read it a second time. I was like, what if I just don't read that sentence? How will I feel <laughs> about the rest of this? And I felt great about it. So, um, mm -hmm. but you know, that, that line aside, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so accurate. This is why COVID has been rough. The mm -hmm. isolation of COVID, working at home all the time, where it says mm -hmm. they like to see their friends regularly and meet with people face to face, so as to feel alive and not alone. I mean, I felt so lonely during this time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was talking with uh, Kristen from Dear Kristen about this mm -hmm. um, on one of Joyce's panels, and she's made multiple videos about it as well. She has. I see that. Really, really relate to what she's talking about. It's hard, you know, because we really um, need just cognitively we just need to experience things with people and, and with life mm -hmm. and you know we're not used to being in our own heads and so being forced to be in our own heads all the time has been very difficult and well do you find that to like uh, when when you're in quarantine does that help develop mm -hmm. the introvert functions a bit yeah um yes and no <laughs> you know like I, I would say yes because i've been forced to and i've really been uh, forced during this time to really evaluate who I am and what I'm doing. Um, but I'm not good at that. You know, like, uh, I don't know if you know much about objective personalities system. Yeah. They have the different animals in that. And one of them is sleep. And that's my last one. That's my last function. So FI and NI in tandem for me is a weak point. I don't slow down to think about like, is the course I'm going on something that aligns with who I am? You know, yeah. like I go moment to moment based on who I am. Mm -hmm. But as far as like a long-term vision, not so much. So I end up I finding myself in positions where I'm like, oh man, this just like, do I really like this job or do I, is this actually what I wanted to do? Like it's, 
um, is this group of friends really who fills me up? You know, right. like mm-hmm. those kinds of things. I might come to those conclusions a little bit later than others. It kind of got you into an FINI check-in kind of process. And um, Absolutely. So, so did you sense like a, a realignment? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing that's been positive, actually. Now, have I hated it? And has it made me hit some rock bottom moments in a midlife crisis? Absolutely. (laughs) 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 And that's been unfortunate. Um, Really good conversations with my wife and I. Um, I've connected with some of my friends in ways that I might not have before. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and so, you know, that's been good. I realized how much I value the people I care about in ways that I might not have thought about as much before the next part is like they are w- able to quickly form a rapport with another person and if tech tactically useful get them to willingly do what they want the ESFP tends to be a clear leader in most of their social situations preferring to take the lead than to be led by someone else as such they tend to be the active half of any duel uh, with the other person tending to follow um ESFPs are interested in people and derive much value from meaningful quality time with others. However, they're not so friendly to um, everyone. Uh, well, before we get to that part, uh, how yeah. much how about this this section here? Like, what resonates with you? Yeah, um, I tend to that quickly form a rapport with another person. That has always been a mm-hmm. strength of mine. My parents always used to say about me, "It's like Brady, you've never met a stranger." You know, like it's wherever I go, I can just talk to anyone, whether it's a celebrity, whether it's just your average person in the office, whether it's, you know, meeting friends, you know, um, I was always the new kid collector. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember you mentioning that, like when uh, we were on Joyce's uh, panel. Yeah. And that's just something that I, I really value, you know, and it's something that's always been easy. I I value it too. I remember, come on in. I I, I value it too, because I remember like in middle school, I was like very, very shy. And I think there's like a couple of ESFPs, they recognize that. And they, I remember the first thing they says, come sit next to, uh, next to us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's like, cause you know, from my perspective, it's like, I feel like I can individually see what people you know, what their needs are. And that, you know, they mentioned that under the force, I think it was under the force part. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Where they can kind of, they can see, you know, through body language cues. And that's something I kind of always been able to figure out. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. this person could use a pick me up or this person kind of needs to be left alone. Like I, I feel like I have right. good ability with that, you know, mm-hmm. reading the room, um, which is not what MBTI says about us, you know, which right. kind of, that always frustrates me. Right. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, that's actually a strength of mine yeah. is not just being the wild child, but like being able to um, connect with people and not, you know, not make them uncomfortable, but actually quite the right. opposite. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And it is, uh, it is a, a super <laughs> yeah. intelligence of the ESFP to be able to do so. I think I was, I, I witnessed mm-hmm. that. I remember there's like a, I, I used to ride the same bus and the uh, bus driver was an ESFP. And like when people came yeah. onto the bus, I can see him like immediately be able to just uh, like read people very well, just to see like uh, who's like um, forthcoming or who, who's not. And he just like adapts like very naturally. Right. And then, yeah. yeah. And I think that is a superpower. I and mean, we have our weaknesses, obviously, which <laughs> we're going to get to pretty soon. Um, but so far in this, I would say this, this is talking about a lot of our positives and I would agree with them. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they tend to be the active. Uh, where, <laughs> where was I? <laughs> Uh, oh, that, oh yeah, they did. SEEs are not so friendly. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, they're not necessarily so friendly to everyone. They know what they like and what they do not like. To those they do not like, they they could be a force to be feared, and they will usually make it quite clear when they're in contempt of a particular individual and can make that person the target of their fearsome temper. These situations are comparatively rare, as the ESP is gregarious and proactive in fostering positive relations with others and often. And finding those people whom they can identify with in a meaningful and reciprocated way, they could be eager to protect those chosen few and can do so tenaciously, going out of their way to help them. Uh, but they could also be very demanding of such people, expecting much from them based on the closeness of their relation. As a result, uh, befriending an ESFP could be challenging, uh, but also rewarding. 
the first half of that I agreed with the second mm -hmm. half a little bit less so, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'm not every SEE. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, the part that I, I definitely agree with, you know, I'm competitive. Um, I did sports uh, mm -hmm. when I was younger um, and competitive ones and was very much someone who, you know, I got a few technical fouls for saying things to referees, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. you know, like I, not, you know, even though in my regular life, I was, mm -hmm. you know, total goody two shoes, mm -hmm. really didn't get much trouble. If I did, it was just for being maybe too loud, but I was always kind and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you put me in an, an arena, you know, in a in the competition realm, I could get kind of nasty. <laughs> you know, and that's, I still catch myself doing that. Like my daughter and I will be playing a card game and I can't bring myself to not like do the move that will, you know, win. Mm -hmm. You know, there's times where I'm like, you know, like, even though I know that she's getting flung because I was winning, <laughs> I can't stop myself. I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't want to lose, you know, <laughs> and I want to win, you know. That's, yeah, in uh, that moment, you could really feel that, um, just like that focus on the competitive aspect of it. Yeah, right. And it's like, all of a sudden, I lose the feeling and I get really into the, you know, the competition. And of course, you know, if I slow down enough, I can kind of see how everything's going and I'm like, okay, no, she needs to win this game. You know, now she's old enough that she is starting to win games, whether I want her to or not. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, that I remember definitely when she was younger, you know, five, six years old, I had to be really careful <laughs> because I'd get really competitive and I could see her yeah. wilting a little bit. So it's yeah. like, Oh crap. You know, I'm getting competitive. I need this. I need to slow it down a notch. Yeah. I, I, I could see this pattern. I, I, I have, uh, I know this, ESTP and then like we said hey do you want to uh, play a game it's like he looked like he was like uh, well yeah we asked like if you want to play a game he's like oh you know you know, I could get really competitive and he actually sounded like he's concerned about that too <laughs> <laughs> because you know because that can take over right. you know and um you know the the term the red mist you know I don't know if that's like a term that people use here in the U.S. or not but I know that's a term they use over in England. Like if someone loses mm -hmm. their mind, like, you know, mm -hmm. playing soccer or whatever, and all of a sudden they just like go two footed <laughs> into somebody. Right. Um, you know, I definitely have experienced that kind of thing before in competition. So <laughs> there's something to watch for. <laughs> okay. So next year, they actually just like jump into mm -hmm. um, expert intuition. ESAPs are able to brainstorm and think about different ideas and initiatives in order to solve a particular issue. Similarly, they reserve the ability to act decisively in areas of uncertainty, usually throwing aside caution so that they could jump in and pull through on sheer resilience. Usually their ability to improvise in a moment will serve them well, and, and an unexpected situation can usually be responded to and dealt with without much hindrance to their desires. So uh, what's your take on this portion? Yeah, it's, in, it's interesting. This is something where I actually prefer for the socionics model when it comes to the quote unquote shadow functions, because I think they have a, like, I, I prefer John B. B. approach, you right. know, where I feel like NE to me isn't actually all that weak in comparison to, let's say, TI or, you know, right. <laughs> NI even. Um, right. So I look at this and I'm like, yeah, no, I, I can. I don't like brainstorming. But when I do, it's not like I'm inept at it. And there's times where I feel like, um, you know, improvising in the moment isn't just seeing things. It's also ideating, you know, it's like, right, well, if I yeah. do this or I could do this and it's, you know, it is, I do feel like their ESFPs do have that creativity side to us. Um, right. <laughs> and that's something that I think it's a little bit, again, it gets a little bit neglected in the community, gets really attributed to um, any and although I think any is more natural at it, I do think right. that, you know, ESFPs can, we can do that. Right. However, ESFPs prefer it when the matter is simple and straightforward and can be irritated by the delay of too much speculation or <laughs> if the problem is too abstract and cannot be fixed by some concrete action. Uh, they prefer, a mul although a multitude of options is sometimes necessary for success. 
uh, the ESFP prefers there to be a clear goal or end for them to direct their energy towards and can quickly grow impatient if ambiguity should leave them floundering in the options. Uh, they're, able mm-hmm. to, they're able to keep an open mind when assessing others and can, uh, to an extent, pick up the inner potential of their acquaintances, uh, what they could do rather than just what they have done. However, they do not tend to indulge this way of thinking unless needed, preferring more immediate and decisive assessments of others based on the traits that are already, they're already apparent. So this is yeah. time to talk about your wife and your daughter. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, my wife is an ENFP. My daughter is an ENTP. Um, there are times where I'm tearing my hair out because they're doing a great job of mm-hmm. coming up with ideas and bouncing off of each other and mm-hmm. making connections. And I'm just sitting there going, Oh my gosh, we have a problem to solve, you know, <laughs> like, you know, or can we please pick something? You know, and, um, or can we go back to the point, please? You know, and, you know, the more I've learned about typology, the more at ease and comfortable I am with that, though, because I realize this is a positive process for them. They're not doing it to me, they're doing it with each other or for themselves. And so this has been something that I've really grown in um, this last year or two Mm -hmm. is realizing, like, yeah, I do want to narrow things down and I do so in a pretty immature way in comparison to someone who's an ni dom right Mm -hmm. um but yeah this is kind of unfortunately this is my this is my mode you know i get really impatient i want things to just happen um Mm -hmm. i want decisions to be made i don't want it i don't want things to be ambiguous i don't want to expand i narrow down so when i see a lot of expansion going on i get really frustrated yeah Um, i'm sure you help to stay i'm sure you help them out in this regards yeah, actually I do. And, you know, something Ashley, my wife has said to me, she's like, you know, I really depend on you sometimes to just like, you know, to ground me, you know, to like, there's times like, you know, like she's spreading her wings and everything and she needs me to be like, hold on, let's land for a second and really come to a conclusion. Hmm. Um, so it is, that is something that can be a good thing, but hmm. man, I read a lot of this and it's like, I'm just reading a bunch of my weaknesses, you know, cause it's, it's talking about, I mean, I know it's mentioning any, but what I'm really reading is my NI weakness when I read some of this. Hmm. Um, hmm. Uh, can you tell yeah. me like more about the NI weakness then in this? Yeah. So when it says, however, SEs do not tend to indulge this way of thinking unless needed, preferring more immediate and decisive assessments hmm. of others based on the tra- traits that are already apparent. So like, I take a lot of surface level observations and want to just roll with it. I just want to move. I just want to go, you know, I just want to go explore the world. I want to do things. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll skip over what could be a better solution and um, or a more um, pointed solution. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just want to rush. I just want to experience, you know, so I miss out sometimes (laughs) on what could be better. Right. Yeah. So they say like with um, introvert intuition, they're looking for the, the best way to skin the cat, though they might wait until yeah. after you're dead. <laughs> right. <do> so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And that is, that is unfortunately the flip side, right? For them, that's where SE weakness comes in. But yeah, it's, it's true. Whereas I might skin 10 cats, you know, I, <laughs> there's no cruelty of animals here. Um, I love cats. <laughs> you know, I might, I might, for the analogy's sake, I might skin 10 cats and screw up nine of them. Right. Just because I'm impatient. So, um, <laughs> but I'll certainly try. <laughs> All right. So next one is loss. So this is the intro, this is intro thinking. So with the ESFP personality, this is their blind spot and this is their weakest point. So ESFPs are fundamentally erratic in their thoughts and behaviors, which may belie a lack of logical clarity, and they may tend to make decisions impulsively and capriciously, doing what they want when they want, and they usually fail to consider whether these their decisions are consistent with what they have done or said before. As such, there's little about them that remain the same in all cases. For this reason, they may strongly resist being analyzed or defined by any theoretical system as they tend to believe no fixed theory can adequately fathom their tempestuous nature. Yeah. So when I read that, what really sticks out to me Mm -hmm. is my 
um, fixation on facts rather than frameworks. So, um, you know, like when I think about TI and laws, it's kind of a similar idea as frameworks. Right. To me, it's like, as I see facts change around me, my opinion changes, you know, like if I see, you know, if I look around the world and see different things changing, my viewpoint will change based on that rather than being like, nope, it's, this principle's true. No matter what's around me, this is true. You know, I don't think that way. So it's weird because even though I'm open-minded in that regard, I can see, see this point of view as well, you know, where it's like, yeah, it wouldn't appear to be very clear how I feel about things. Mm-hmm. My opinion changes often, right. you know, I'm not sharing those facts with other people. They just see that my opinions changed. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you you do like um, get into things that are very TI, such as going to personality systems. Yeah, that's true. And I am able to soak in the information, Mm -hmm. but I kind of, I can tell that my approach is not, well, the fundamental framework of this part of your brain doing this, that, and that, you know, I'm not thinking that way. I'm Mm -hmm. thinking like, oh, these 10, these types of people that I've witnessed that are these types um, they have these processes, right? You know, so yeah. it's definitely more of like a blanket, a blanket TE approach yeah. rather than, um, or just taking people's word for it. You know, that's mm-hmm. kind of right. amateur TE, fortunately, you know, it's like, Oh, this expert says that. And I just kind mm-hmm. of find myself believing it, you know, and, um, I have to catch myself there and, and slow down and be like, Whoa, you know, I, does that actually make sense or not? You know, I'm easily <laughs> swayed with Mm. smart people (laughs) (laughs) and uh i'll I'll start to take on some of their beliefs and then i have to slow down and be like no hold on have i actually done my due diligence with this idea or not Mm. um Mm -hmm. but yeah so i I, I like how i like how you met yeah what you're mentioning here so like you you do engage in ti but it's like kind of like the last consideration that you'll you'll make that's why when people say esfps cannot do this i'm like no we can we just don't want to you know, or the, it is the last consideration. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's more than, it's not simply just like a weakness. It's also like a matter of perspective too, right? Mm-hmm. From the TI perspective, that's not something you would consider first. I what, what I find interesting is like, this is kind of the reverse of what the INTP does. So the last thing they would consider is uh, expert sensing. First thing they'll consider is introvert thinking. So I think about like yeah. Rene Descartes, like he doesn't, believe that there's <laughs> he starts off not believing that there's a world around him and then he has to like yeah, prove yeah. it theoretically and he says okay yeah the world does yeah. exist around me. <laughs> oh my god that is so funny yeah i and that to me is just mind-boggling like i have to remind myself like the world does not own me you know i have to remind myself i like, guess i'm also an entity who has like the power to you know to come to some conclusions on my own. So right. that is something that I definitely, you know, cause if I have TI and NI as my weakest points, you mm-hmm. know, especially on the socionic system, but I'd say that's also true in MBTI. Um, yeah. I have to remind myself, it's like, no, I can come to my own conclusions. I don't need others to dictate my conclusions. And that can be hard sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember talking with uh, an INTP friend of mine and uh, she has uh, ESFP's sister, right? and she mentions mm-hmm. about just like um, what are like each other's strengths and weaknesses, and how they differ from one another. And I remember like uh, yeah. we talk about like uh, well, one strength of the INTP is like they kind of like have almost like this inner book or library that they kind of go to. And uh, in, the, in the beginning, like like and for ESFPs, it's kind of like different. Like they kind of like seek that from the outside, right? Yeah. Yeah, I view I view a lot of resources as more like references mm. rather than a library. It's just like, oh, you know, like here's this one little point of data from this, mm. right. you know, rather than really fully grasping and understanding everything about it. Let's see. Well, okay, occasionally the desires of uh, ESFPs can be unreasonable, uh, with their appetites driving them to want more than they they're owed and shirk the rules for their desire and those of their friends. This may be interpreted as opportunistic or selfish by more orderly principled sorts of people. Uh, they may be more disposed to think in terms of what they're able to get rather than right, the right to have it, and they may 
try to challenge or ignore the rule of law when they can get away with it. Uh, they take the position of pure pragmatism. That's the expert thinking there. Uh, nothing being seen as intrinsically correct or out of bounds and adopting wildly different policies from one situation to the next. Uh, they use a whatever works um, kind of idea and that's sufficient for them. The need to be consistent and have a clear ideology or set of principles is foreign to them, uh, uh, to ESPs who is more inclined to doing whatever they want and finding whatever can help them to do so, regardless of where it sits with the previous attempts. Such theoretical propositions to them are worthless unless converted into real pra pragmatic actions that serve a need. That last sentence really struck struck to the core of what this is all about to me because right. to me unless there's pragmatic action or concrete proof of something you know mm -hmm. if i don't have empirical evidence of something i'm like mm -hmm. well what's the point of it then you know because i do focus so much more on the outside world than i do on my internal world mm -hmm. um you know and i didn't realize just how strong that was for me until mm -hmm. i got deeper into typology i was like wow you know, I really do have this problem of an SETE focus kind of skipping over my FI sometimes um, and definitely not paying attention to the TI, <laughs> you know, and just like, mm -hmm. like whatever works, works, you know, that, that whole, whatever works is often sufficient is really true for me mm -hmm. um, right. to the point where, you know, if there's a stop sign, I won't go through it, but I'll certainly roll up to it and turn if there's no cars coming, because I'm like, well, in this situation, I don't need to stop. You know? um, <laughs> right, yeah. I will stop. Right. I mean, uh, you know, Joyce mentioned this, I think when we were talking on our panel, that is something that we can kind of, you know, it's a trap we can fall into mm. like bending of rules based on, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it doesn't really matter right now, you know, like this whole, the TI principle thing, mm -hmm. you know, when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. Um, my parents would ask me to do things and I would, I would lie that I did it because they couldn't prove whether I did it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas I think someone with stronger TI would be like, well, that, you know, the TI FE axis wouldn't be okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it would be different. Like that principle for them would be violated. Right. Whereas for me, it was like, Hey, they imposed this on me. I didn't want to do it. I didn't agree to this. So right. they don't have a way to prove whether I did this or not. So I'll be like, yeah, I did my homework. Yeah, I totally turned it in, not knowing that I just made up answers and handed it in like five minutes, you know, <laughs> before <laughs> it was due. Um, you know, and that's something that, you know, I have to check myself as I'm getting older, I'm getting better at that. I, I, I can't even begin to tell you the degree of my expert sensing problems. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother matter. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. I mean, we we all have these weaknesses and okay. they're all... They're all unfortunate. For the <laughs> They're all unfortunate you know, and just... doled out equally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, fortune and... to everybody. <laughs> right. So I look at that, like the polar and the, you know, in the socionic system, and then the, um, an MBTI, the inferior. And I look right. at those two mm -hmm. functions. I'm like, yeah, those are the roots of my problems in life. Right. right. Like I, I really do see it. Um, this one a little bit less. So I think I personally feel that the inferior function is a bigger problem for me, mm. but I also don't, I, part of that might just be because this is polar, I don't really see the point. And I think that's kind of how I most see. types fall into yeah, that. Yeah, we, we so can be like, more fixated on the inferior function. 